Hey guys, Ben here, and welcome back to another video on Superman Lois Season 2. Today we're going to be doing my review slash breakdown for Episode 2, so if you do go on to enjoy the video, please be sure to leave a like and a comment, and subscribe if you're new so you don't miss any DC TV videos later this year. Okay, so this episode was pretty damn solid. It's pretty much on par with the first episode, although I do have a few nitpicks here and there about some of the things in terms of continuity and does it make sense but that is kind of small compared to what is going on right now because this storyline is very intriguing and I can't wait to see where this doomsday storyline ends up going so I have lots of theories we're going to be talking about some of them in today's video also I'm going to be heading back from America very soon that's why there's been a lack of uploads but I'll be back on more of a daily schedule in the next couple of days so hopefully you guys stick around for those videos but without further ado let's go ahead and get into today's episode so it begins with a cooking montage Lois is feeling much better it's pretty obvious that she's trying to please not only her family but also Natalie and John their new house guests which is obviously a direct continuation from the night before or you know a couple of days before they didn't really specify how long it's been However, they are settling in and Lois is doing her best to make them feel comfortable and she's cooking, which is something it seems like they infer that she doesn't do that much. So it's kind of surprising to see. Anyway, so it's revealed that Natalie is a vegan and I was like, yes, because obviously that breakfast was not exactly what Natalie wanted. So it's pretty clear that Lois should have asked before what everyone wanted, but it's made obvious that she's trying to please everyone and she just got carried away and, you know, it was a nice gesture. Okay, so let's move on. So Clark gets his doomsday headaches again, that's what we're going to call them. And so his headaches are getting much, much worse. And it's revealed later in the episode that he is having vision. So it's not just headaches, it is him seeing things. And that he has some sort of mysterious connection to doomsday. Now we're calling him Doomsday because it's been talked about by the showrunner that this person under the mines is in fact Doomsday, but we're just building up to him. So next episode we should get the big reveal on who he is and what he actually looks like because we don't know. Is he going to be like the Batman vs Superman Doomsday? Is he going to be similar to the comics? I don't know if he's going to be more humanoid. We'll have to wait and see. So. He sees the destruction underground and the rocks crumbling, he describes it and he heard screaming the last time so that's the big difference that makes him think oh maybe he's seeing something. And so let's move on from here, so we have Jordan and Sarah who have lunch together, it's super awkward, then Natalie and Sarah strike a sort of friendship straight away because of their interest in cars. So basically Natalie is like yeah I'm gonna help you Sarah fix your car because I'm great at this and I was taught by my dad in his bunker which is what we call his workshop so that was a funny line I did like that and so basically Sarah ditches on Jordan throughout this episode and she's very detached from Jordan and he knows it and it's sad to see but we get the revelations later and we'll talk about that in a bit and so one of the weird nitpicks that I have and one of the weird subplots is Chrissy. Now, she always is on something else, like, she's sometimes investigating the same things as Lois and, you know, on the same page, but a lot of the time she's kind of just moaning at Lois, and so she's one of my least favourite characters on the show, because I don't think she serves a big purpose, she just serves as a way to kind of put Lois in check every once in a while, and so in this episode Chrissy's getting all scared about a new podcast, and basically this podcast could expose Lois and this is because some of her old sources are basically going back on one report that she put out and apparently this was a pretty important report and it's something that we've never been given insight into so it's weird that they bring it up like completely out of nowhere and discuss it like we know exactly what this article is because really all we see is like a snippet of this podcast and the podcast title has nothing to do with what they're talking about so it's a little hard to follow and it feels like they've just implemented it as a way to introduce this new storyline with Lois and obviously create some tensions in the office with Chrissy but it doesn't feel very real it feels kind of forced and so that was one of my issues in this episode but let's move on from that so Superman visits Morgan Edge we get to see Tauro 
once again he does his classic hello brother and so it's a great surprise to see him back. I was not expecting to see him back at all, maybe ever again, because normally villains in the past are pretty much left behind because, you know, they want to move on to the next villain. But he says, see you soon, brother. And so it's pretty clear that one day he's going to escape and probably return. And it was revealed this episode that he was pretending that he didn't have his powers again, because if you remember at the end of season one, he got his powers taken away but now somehow he's gained them back. And so there's definitely something that they're trying to build with that storyline, and they are going to make him come back. Even if it's not this season, I think it'll be the next season. And so it's interesting that they're setting up Superman's brother as his sort of reverse Flash who will always come back in this series. So it was a great surprise to see him in so much of this episode, and I really, really liked it. And so Lois shows up to the New Minds, and she's investigating the earthquake, it's revealed that they are extracting the X kryptonite from last season and basically they say it could be dangerous in the wrong hands so that's why they're extracting it. And although the person who is in charge of the site isn't so sus at the start, the more you get into it, the more you realize, oh, maybe something else is going on here and we get a big reveal at the end of the episode in regards to that character. And also, if you think about Doomsday being under the mines, how did he get under the mines? Was he born of this ex kryptonite? I'm not sure. We're gonna see in the next couple of episodes, but it's interesting that he's stuck down there. And so then we go over to a completely different side of the episode, which is more grounded and more to do with Smallville. And that is that Daniel Hart, who was running for mayor, is going to drop out of the race because he got offered a new job and he needs to do it for his family. And so Lana is obviously very upset about this because she believed that he would be the one to take over the old mayor. However, it's been made pretty clear by them going through literally a checklist of people of who everyone likes that Lana was going to run for mayor. And by the end of the episode, Kyle gets some signatures from his colleagues in the fire department. And it's just made pretty clear and even in Lana's mind that she should run as the new mayor of Smallville and so that's going to be a storyline with her and if it eventually happens she's going to be known as Mayor Cushing. And so in the midst of something else Superman hears with his superheroing some gunshots and so he goes over to this airport he stops an attack but the villain he's fighting he isn't able to actually properly stop so he attempts to stop him but this villain inhales some gas and he's given super strength and so he gets his visions again whilst he's fighting, so he can't concentrate. So he gets knocked down really easy by this superpower villain, but then the DoD super soldiers come in and save him. And so they're called the Threat Reduction Agency, that's what they call them in this episode. So Tag Harris shows up once again, obviously he's got super speed and he's very useful for them. So Superman, when he wakes up back at the DoD, questions Lieutenant Anderson using a kid, essentially, as part of his army. And he basically shakes that off. So it's obviously very sus what he's doing, using these superpower beings as basically soldiers for America. And that's going to be a lot of the conflict this season between him and Lieutenant Anderson. And it's revealed after this fight, when Superman wakes up by Lieutenant Mitch Anderson, that the villain who he was fighting was using X kryptonite and that's what he was inhaling to give himself superpowers and so he's been selling X kryptonite because people really want to get superpowers and they'll do anything to get it and so that's kind of a new storyline that they're introducing so you can kind of guess that maybe a couple more people are going to show up with superpowers thanks to this guy selling X kryptonite around. And so John Henry Irons in the meantime back in Smallville is helping out Lois. You get this kind of tiny flashback scene. He's still adjusting to being around Lois because of everything that's happened obviously in the past with them. And so he's got a seismometer and he's able to record the earthquake and they basically figure out something is wrong. There is something beneath the mines and it's not a normal earthquake. And back on a sort of lighter tone over in Smallville, we have Jonathan who still feels out of place on his team and now he's got big opposition and the guy that he's annoyed by, he thinks he's on steroids and so maybe he's going to sort of question like, 
when am I going to get my superpowers or do I have to, you know, enhance myself in order to become the best person that I can to become, you know, worthy on this football team. So that's kind of a Jonathan thing that he's figuring out. And so we get this big kind of confrontation with Clark and Tauro in Tauro's fortress in the desert because basically they go and actually try and get some information about what's going on with Superman's headaches and so that's where we get to meet Lara Zorel for the first time, Superman's mum. And so after this, so Tao actually is able to break out for a bit, he's got his powers back and so he fights his nephew and when Jordan gets home he kind of boasts to Jonathan basically that he's more powerful because he landed a couple blows on his uncle and Jonathan is very impressed and Jordan's impressed and I'm pretty sure this just one line means that yeah, Jordan is going to become much more powerful this season and he's going to eventually become that Superboy figure we've been all waiting for him to become eventually. And so talking about Jordan, so Sarah gives him a talk and she talks about her feelings. Sarah reveals that she kissed someone at camp, which I thought was pretty obvious. And so she kissed someone called Aubrey. She doesn't want to see her, but Jordan is obviously kind of taken aback by this. He didn't expect it because, you know, he probably loves her. And so I'm not sure what to think about all of this, but I do think Jordan kind of deserves better because he hasn't done anything wrong, he's very innocent and he's just, you know, very much so head over heels for Sarah. But we'll see how this story progresses. And so let's talk a bit about the fortress and what they were doing over there. So they break Tower of Prison and he's in the fortress with kal and with Jordan as well. And so this is where we see Lara. And so she's less of a hologram and more of a natural person in this episode. So this is my one nitpick as well as what I talked about earlier because I felt like she was an actual person rather than, you know, her actually being a hologram because I really like what they did on Supergirl with Kara's mum because she wasn't able to get personal. She was only able to give answers and obviously she was a bit personal but she wasn't able to go as far as to say all these emotional things that Lara said in this episode which I thought came across as a bit false because we know how holograms interact by looking at Supergirl and so I think that kind of retcon of how they set up holograms in the Arrowverse is a bit weird and I don't really like it that much. That's just my personal opinion. I don't know if you guys thought it was a bit too far to make her be able to say so much without, you know, kind of constraining her because she is a literal hologram. She's not a real person. And so the reason that Superman is there in the fortress is to try and get Lara's answers to his visions. And so he actually gets some answers and this is that some other being is causing Superman's visions. And so they link that to Doomsday's tremors. And so next episode, you're going to get the big reveal that the earthquakes and Superman's visions have all been caused by Doomsday. And somehow Superman has this supernatural link to Doomsday, probably because he is part Kryptonian. Now, we don't know exactly why he's completely linked like this and why it's affecting Superman so much, but we will find out. And so let's go back to Smallville. So Sarah and Natalie try and fix Kyle's rusty old card that he got Sarah. And so... Sarah's secret is not so secret, obviously this is before she reveals what she did at summer camp to Jordan, but it's a nice scene between the two of them and I like that friendship that they're kind of starting to strike up. And so it's also very impressive to see Natalie and her mechanic skills just like her father. Okay, so down in the mines we have the miners who are killed by Doomsday and you see a brief glimpse of him which you can see on the screen right here. You can't really make out how big he is at all because we kind of don't know the dimensions of the mine but there is a couple lights on him which I thought was interesting and so he's trapped down there as one of the miners deploys a charge to trap him down there and so Basically, he's stuck for now, but he will get out because he is Doomsday after all. Okay, so one final nitpick, and now this is the way that Lucy Lane is brought up. Now, you guys know, if you're Arrowverse fans and if you're Supergirl fans, that Lucy was a big deal in Supergirl Season 1. She was James's girlfriend, she was a DEO agent, she was pretty damn awesome. Like, everyone loved her, she was a great character. And now, she's brought up in this episode. And this is to do with the story 
with Chrissy and Lois. And again, we have no idea what's going on. There is a person called Ali involved and I have no idea what was going down. So like in my notes, I'm like, who is this person? Like, I have no idea, but it's pretty damn obvious by what they say there that they are rewriting Lucy Lane's story and that she is not a DEO agent that she was on Supergirl. Instead, she's going to show up to help not expose Lois and help her because of these online rumors about one of her stories being fake. And so this is a weird kind of offshoot excuse for a storyline. That's just what I think because obviously Lucy has a history in the Arrowverse and I know that they were going to retcon it. The showrunner did say that the other day, but this excuse for her to show up obviously feels a bit forced in my opinion. And so I'm not very sure about how I think, you know, Lucy's going to show up and it just doesn't seem right because of what she's done in the past. Like, she is a badass and why can't she stay that way? Like, what's wrong with that? And so, yeah, I'm not so sure about this retconning, but that's just my personal opinion. Okay, so the last thing. So the DOD are after Doomsday, or so we think. Is this person at the end of the episode actually working for the DOD? Or is she working for one of the villains of this season? Because we know that there are going to be two villains. So there's Doomsday and there's someone else. And so you can presume maybe it's the DOD. Maybe they want this Doomsday on their side. You know, for their super soldier team. However, it could be someone else that she's working for. And I don't know what's going on. But they're going to go down the mines and try and find this being. And try and control them, most likely. So that pretty much does it for this video guys, thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed this episode and if you enjoyed my video, please be sure to leave a like and a comment and subscribe and turn on notifications to not miss any future videos and you can click on the top right corner of the screen to watch my latest video but for now, thank you guys so much for watching and I'll catch you guys later, goodbye. I see